Hello everybody, my name is Dakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we are taking a look at aluminum and we are going to start off by sending off our bauxite refinement milestone in order to unlock the aluminum technologies. All right, and with that milestone away, we can now take a look at aluminum. Now, aluminum is a more complex factory than most of the ones we've taken on so far. Although fortunately, it's quite small and relatively simple to build if you have the logistics for it. And that's really the big challenge of the tier seven and eight milestones is having the logistics network to support them. Fortunately, we have a brand new packaged fuel power plant providing all the power we're gonna need, as well as a map-wide train network. And so we are well equipped for this. Now our aluminum factory is gonna require three main material inputs. That's gonna be bauxite, which is a new material we've just unlocked, coal and copper. So we're gonna go on a quick search for a location that is well suited for this factory. That's either close to one or more of these materials or has easy access to our train network so that we can bring in the products we need. Once we've found a location for the factory, we'll get to work producing the two main aluminum components. That's gonna be the all clad aluminum sheets and the aluminum casing. So our goal for today is to produce a factory that will produce all of the aluminum sheets and aluminum casings we're gonna need for a while. Before we get started, everything we're doing today is timestamped in the description below. Let's get into it. All right, I have scoured the map and found a place for our aluminum factory. We are up here on a cliff above the entrance to the islands. You can see our Fixmas factory and our packaged fuel power plant there in the distance and our main base off a little further away. This is just past the end of our previous train network, so I extended that out just a little bit so that we could build this platform. And this is where we are going to be constructing our aluminum factory. Now, I chose this location for two reasons. First is that it's on top of water, which means all the water where we might want, we have access to, and that is going to be helpful for us. And second, because it has access to bauxite. This is one of the easier bauxite nodes to access and tap. There were several monsters up here. I cleared those out before uh, starting filming, but uh, we're going to be able to mine out 240 bauxite a minute and maybe even overclock that to get a bit more and send that on down to our factory down below. Now, aluminum is also going to need copper and coal, and so let's pop on over and take a look at our solution for that. All right, we are here at our basic steel factory, and you can see that I have reworked our coal lines just a little bit. We're going to be using the coal from one of these veins and sending that over to our aluminum factory. You can see we're sending that into a truck station for now. We've also tapped the copper vein that was sitting on top of that little plateau, and we're also gonna be sending across the raw copper. Now we were able to do this because we hadn't been utilizing these veins to their full potential. We built these factories when we were still working with Mark I miners and before we had the means to overclock them. So by replacing these with Mark II miners and then putting in some power shards to make sure that we have all of the coal we need to run our coal power plant, as well as for our basic steel factory, we're able to reclaim one of the veins and use that for aluminum. Let's head on back to the aluminum factory and get started with a time lapse. All right, we're gonna start off by mining 240 bauxite and combining that with 240 water that we pull from some water extractors into 240 alumina solution in two refineries. Now the alumina solution recipe will also create a bit of silica. We're just gonna go ahead and sink that. We're not gonna make use of it here. The Illumina solution will pass into another refinery along with 120 coal that we're bringing in via train line, and this will produce 360 Illumina scrap. Now this recipe is also going to create 120 water, so we're going to send that back into our first two refineries in order to complement the 240 that we'll be extracting to make the 360 needed for the Illumina solution. Now we're going to take that 360 aluminum scrap and send that into six smelters that are set to use the pure aluminum ingot alternate recipe. This will produce 180 aluminum ingots. Now we're going to use a manifold line to send this into one constructor and three assemblers. The constructor is going to be producing aluminum casings. It will use 90 aluminum ingots to produce 60 casings per minute. The other 90 aluminum ingots are going to be sent into the assemblers to produce all clad aluminum sheets. This is also going to require 30 copper ingots. Now we're bringing in some copper ore, so we'll set up another couple smelters to turn these into ingots. Finally, we'll take our owl-clad aluminum sheets and our aluminum casings and load them back on the train to ship over to our storage system. With that out of the way, let's get into it.
and that is an aluminum factory all complete. Now there are many ways to lay out an aluminum factory and I tried to make a design that was as simple as possible. Now this is an end game factory, so it is quite complex, but my goal here was to make it as straightforward and easy to build as possible. Let's go through it. We're gonna start off by mining some bauxite up there on the cliff and sending that down with a conveyor line over here into our refineries. Now we're using a bottom fed belt system here. So the, the bauxite line comes in, goes into a couple of splitters down here below the floor, and then goes up these lifts into the refineries. Simple enough. Now the recipe that we're using here is the default Illumina solution recipe. If we were to change this, the only alternative for us here is sloppy Illumina. Now, this is actually a slightly higher yield recipe and in some ways might be a more efficient way of doing things, but it complicates the factory and my goal here is simple. So we're gonna stick with the basic Illumina solution recipe. Now, the, either of those re recipes are gonna require some water. So we're gonna go ahead and pipe that water in from these three water extractors over here on the left. So this pipe comes on up, jumps up to the top platform, and then goes into the refineries. So we'll ignore that second pipe for now. We'll come back to that in a little bit. So that's our first step, is we are making some alumina solution in two refineries from 240 bauxite and 240 water. We're actually using 360 water, uh, but these are tuned to only produce 240 water. Now the refineries crafting the alumina solution also produce a bit of silica. So you can see that we're using a pipeline to send the alumina solution into another refinery. But the silica we're sending through some vertical conveyor lifts underneath the floor and into some mergers where they're sent over here to be sunk. I did not realize that was clipping, so uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do that. That looks better. Okay. So with that silica out of the way, we can focus on the alumina solution. Now that alumina solution is going to go into another refinery to be turned into aluminum scrap. Now, just like with the Illumina solution, we have a couple of options for our recipes here. We're using the default recipe here, aluminum scrap, which produces both aluminum scrap and water. Our, our alternative also produces aluminum scrap and water. The difference between these is what we pair the Illumina solution with. We're choosing to pair it with coal here, whereas the electrode aluminum scrap pairs it with petroleum coke, which means we need to get that from some sort of refinery atop an oil node. And I felt that simply redirecting a miner that we had already placed was simpler than building a brand new oil refinery. So we went with the default recipe and we are using coal for this. Now this is gonna be producing some aluminum scrap and some water. And the water is the tricky part here. With a fluid output, we need to have something to do with it. And since we can't just sink water the same way we can sink fluids, we have to have some purpose for it. Now, it is possible to sink water if you pair it with another recipe, something like the wet concrete or the uh, pure iron ingots, for example. Instead, what I'm choosing to do is run this pipeline all the way back over here and reconnect up to our water line from our first two refineries. This is actually providing a third of the water that we're using in those first two refineries, which is why it's okay for us to undertune the three water extractors just a little bit to make sure that they run efficiently. Now, once we have aluminum scrap, the construction process is actually very simple and it's very reminiscent of the sort of constructions we've been doing all through the game. We take the aluminum scrap and we send that over here into some smelters where we are using the aluminum ingot, the pure aluminum ingot alternate recipe to turn that into aluminum ingots. So we are getting, uh, at this point, we can treat the aluminum scrap just like a raw ore, like a, a copper ore or an iron ore, and we are smelting it to get ingots. Those ingots are then sent around the corner over here to go into a constructor to produce casings. So that's our first one. And then our second production step is an assembler. And, and this is slightly more complex, but again, something we've been doing for a long time. In this case, we're making the all clad aluminum sheets. Now this is a slower recipe than the casings requiring us to have three assemblers in order to fully use the remaining 90 ingots that we're producing. And each of those assemblers is gonna take 10 copper. So in order to answer that, we're bringing in a little bit of copper ore, sending that into a couple of smelters, and then we're sending the copper ingots along with the aluminum ingots into our assemblers to be turned into all clad aluminum sheets. Once all that's done, we're simply sending this off to our storage system. Now I chose to use a train based logistics system here instead of running a belt all the way back to main base because I like the way it looks better and because it, it feels more alive to me. But if you prefer the way a belt looks, there's nothing wrong with running a two kilometer belt 
between your different factories or building all of your factories very centrally located and running belts out to the various resource nodes you want to mine. Now there is one more design decision I wanted to talk to you guys about with this factory. And that's what you can do if you don't have the pure aluminum ingot alternate recipe. By this point in the game, it's very likely that you might have found 60 hard drives and not gotten all of the alternate recipes you want because so many of them are available. Very early on, it's very easy to get the recipes you want because they unlock as you open up new tiers. So it's really easy to get things like cast screws or iron wire. But by the time you get into tier seven or eight, it becomes much, much harder to get the recipes you're looking for. So if you've had bad luck with hard drives and haven't managed to get your pure aluminum ingot recipe, I want to explain how this factory design can be modified in order to accommodate that. Now, the difference between the pure aluminum ingot recipe and the sort of default recipe is the building that they're crafted in and the requirements. Instead of being crafted in a smelter, they're crafted in a foundry. And you can see that in addition to taking aluminum scrap, they also take silica. Now we're actually generating just a little bit of silica and sinking it at our factory, but we aren't generating enough silica in order to power all of the foundries we would need to. We would need to bring some in. And at the time I planned this factory, I hadn't actually unlocked the pure aluminum ingot recipe. And so I wanna go really quickly through how the factory would be a little bit different, and then we'll go over how we would have gotten the silica to this location. All right, we're here above our smelter array, and I want to highlight how things would have been different if we didn't have this recipe. First of all, we would have been using foundries instead of smelters here, and we would have placed four of them instead of six smelters. That would have consumed our 360 aluminum scrap. Now it works out that the smelters and the foundries actually take the same amount of space. Six smelters and four foundries are the same width. The difference is how they're fed. And so we would have had a belt running along underneath and feeding into those foundries from below. So this section of the factory would be replaced with four foundries instead of six smelters. Now bringing in the silica would have been a little bit more of a challenge. So let's pop over to a spot along our train line and talk about how we would have managed it. All right, we are here in our quartz cave, and this is where we're mining the quartz for our crystal oscillator factory. You can see we've also got uh, our friend Squishy over there in his enclosure. Now, this cave is quite near our main base, but it's deep underground. You can see there's our space elevator, and we're just a little bit north of that. And so one of the things that we did when we ran this train line originally was we uh, kept in mind that there's actually a second quartz vein down here that we had not tapped. It's just over here at the other end of this uh, large cavernous room. Now this quartz vein is the opportunity that we need to bring silica to our aluminum factory because our aluminum train passes through here. You can see here it comes now. And so we had the opportunity if we needed to, to tap this quartz vein, turn it into raw silica and load it up at that train station in order to send it over to the aluminum factory. Now this is something I'd figured out in advance of ever starting the factory was what to do if I didn't get the resources or the alternate recipes I needed. And this is one of the tricks to late game is you have to start thinking not just about the factory you're currently building, but the factories you might want to build down the line. And so by bearing that in mind, when we originally sort of built in this cave and then planning our logistics line to make use of this, we had that option available to us at any time. So that's it. I hope that you guys find this factory easy to understand and accessible. That's the goal after all. And I'd love if you could leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this factory or how we could do things better in the future. All right, we're back here at our storage system. And you can see, that's our computers, you can see that, that's our oscillators, there we go. We can see that after just about 20 minutes, we have a large stockpile of all cloud aluminum sheets starting to pile up, as well as aluminum casing. Let's grab a few stacks of each of these and pop on over to the hub to see what we can do with them. All right, the first thing we're gonna want to unlock today is Logistics Mark V. This is going to give us the Mark V conveyor belt, which will make use of those all clad aluminum sheets. Now, the good news is this will allow us to move up to 780 items per minute, which will greatly simplify production lines in some of our larger and more complex factories. I'm very, very excited about this. Let's wait for that drop pod to return, and then we can take a look at our next technology, which is much more exciting. All right, and let's pop in here and take a look at our next milestone, the hover pack. All 
All right, and we have a hover pack. The hover pack is the technology I'm probably most excited for at the beginning of this tier because it allows us to fly freely and do so many things. It's so much easier now to do detailing and, and construction work, and I, I love it. I'm so excited for this. Now the hover pack, instead of drawing fuel, draws from our power grid and it connects wirelessly to any powered structure. That includes buildings, power lines, and railways, which means that as long as we are near one of those, we can fly. You can see there's a small meter in the bottom left corner that tells us how close we are to the nearest power source. If we move away from this, then eventually our power will fail. But if we hold space, we'll still get slow fall. That's built in. So this is a, a free automatic parachute as well. And so this is a great, uh, great boon for us to have at this time. I'm very excited for the construction opportunities that this brings for us. It means that an important technique for us is going to be whenever we want to go work on a new building to sort of pre-set up the structure and line it with power so that we have an easy time floating around and building at that location. All right, and that is going to do it for today. I know this has been a little bit of a shorter episode than usual, but this is a good sort of natural breaking point. Our next episode has us building a lot of major components that will go into our next big project. And we don't really have time to get started on that here today. So we'll save that for next time. But as always, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Ben Dacoba and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.